بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأول الأمر منكم and always a reminder for myself أنا عبدك العجيس ضعيف مسكين وظالم وجهل and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and alhamdulillah they open for us to take a path towards being a nukht, a dot, a zero, non-existent. As much as we reach towards non-existence, not giving ourselves importance, not thinking that we're the one, a one, the one, only one. As much as we can negate that reality, Allah opens the infinite capacity of a nukht, a zero, a dot. And the entire horizon within the heavens and eternal energies and realities open for the servant. If their life is about the manifestation and the One being present on earth, their material life, their material form, the material progress, then Allah opens for the servant because the servants have the power to manifest. If it's the One you want, Allah opens for you your dunya and makes your way towards dunya. And if you're a bit religious, then Allah opens your dunya and says, if that's what you want, be careful what you wish for. But when they ask that, Ya Rabbi, we want guidance, don't leave me to myself and my desire, and that's what got me in the problem in the first place. So we make a prayer that, Ya Rabbi, I know nothing. And I know not what you want for me, I know what I want for myself but that usually doesn't work in the same direction. What we want for ourselves is not necessarily what Allah wants for us. So it's not about trying to, oh Shaykh can we pray for ourselves, and pray, do anything you want. But be cautious of praying for what you want. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Because awliya warn us that be careful because with every, every want there are many loaded packages with that, that you may not be prepared to handle in life and it may set you off your course. So then they told us that, pray for Allah's will, Ya Rabbi I know not what I need or what I want or what I'm in need for but you know and I know not. You know best what I'm in need of and I want to reach towards your will. I beg your forgiveness and I seek your satisfaction. And then that became the reality of the whole path, is it a continuous reminder not to impose my will within everything. So the du'a of Salihin and the people of Tariqah whom have been trained, they're cautious of that. Because everyone should know that their will, 99.9% .9 of people doesn't match Allah's will. Had you matched Allah's will, you would have been Rabbaniyoon 
and you would have power of kun fayakun. It's our will that got us in trouble to begin with. It's the gift that Allah gave to us that we're supposed to surrender. What Allah wants from you? Only cash? You have to give your zakat? Or what is the greatest gift after you gave money and you passed the trembling phase? Then you began to give of yourself and your khidmat because this is a higher level is to give your time and to give what Allah has given to you. They rise above that and then they realize that the highest level of giving is to surrender our will back to Allah That my free will because people are free and people say, why are they, these Muslims are doing this and whoa this one, this Muslim he's uh, smoking hookah and drinking fake beer, look it didn't look like lightning hit him. which is forbidden for us. You don't need a fatwa to understand that. Common sense tells you if you have a fake Heineken, uh, imitating is as bad as replicating. Shaykh Nazim didn't even allow you to have on your table a glass that looks like a champagne glass. At least somebody take a photo and say, oh look this person has a champagne glass on their table. That's how cautious they were of their, their responsibility to Allah You can't imitate uh, this uh, satanic system and think Allah's okay with that. So it means all these people whom imposing their will and they're happy with it and they keep doing it and keep praying and as if like a rocket ship they're going farther. And people are not understanding that well then why Allah's giving it to them? Because Allah's great. Allah is generous and He gave us free will. If you choose to jump, jump. Nobody stops, no angel appears and says, don't do that. It's your free will. You I want to do this, I want to make my prayers for this. Whatever you're praying for, that's your prayer. But the perfection of prayer in ibadah, awliya come into our lives and say, don't pray for that. That it can be uh, loaded and we've given many examples in our 30 years of teaching. People pray for immense amounts of rizq, oh shaykh let it just open big, I want a big job, big contract, big this. And many times in our again 30 years of doing this we've seen people come, get their rizq, they're gone. Why? Because they underestimated shaitan and their nafs. Actually shaitan works with the nafs and the tariqahs because he knows. He says, okay go sit with these people online or in person, be humble, keep getting a prayer from him, something gonna open from you. So they know they work with the person because they don't bother the person to sit and they sit, they sit, they pray, they watch and things open in life and all of a sudden you say, where, where's this person, where'd they go, what happened to them? And that's all the nafs wanted. The ticket came in, got punched and said, thank you very much, we're off and they got something and they ran. And that comes back to that, be careful what you pray for. If you don't have your practices and your ability to control these things and only Allah knows what your tipping point will be and, and how much rizq can really flip you and, and what kind of conditions you put yourself in, will you be able to get back and, and keep your faith and, and people go to places and move away in, in, in different environments and they start to lose their faith or they live in very busy environments and they feel their faith going, dripping away. So then only come and teach us is that surrender your will is the highest level of zakat because zaki and, and giving because everybody has to give. So you're going to give your money, if you don't give your money you're going to be sick, it's a guarantee. If you take money 
and you don't give donation, you get sick. Because the sustenance is sick, the sustenance is contaminated, it comes from dunya. So zaki and zakat and sadaqah are cleaning mechanisms. So then they give, once they give they, dis- they rank becomes higher, become like salihin. This was in Rajab and Surah Munafiqeen dies and the only thing he can ask Allah, oh he realizes this is now judgment day, Ya Rabbi send me back. I want to give everything so that I can become salihin. Not make hajj, not go finish my salah, not make up all, all these things. But what I had in my accounts, let me give them all away and then bring me back so that I can become salihin. So I mean this level of purity, then the next level they understood is, oh I should also give my time. And they give their khidmat, their service, their abilities, I'm a lawyer I can write for you, I'm a writer I can write for you, I'm a business person I can help with you. And they live their life with service, then the highest was what? That I want to give my will. And they begin to pray to Allah that, it's best that I give and surrender my will to you. And what is it that you want for me? Ya Rabbi I know not what you want and I'm surrendering my will to you, guide me Ya Rabbi. And in every prayer it's not what I want, what you want, not what I want, what you want because this is the prayer of the nukht. This is a reminder for myself always because we all start to pray, how about this, how about that, how about this? And awliya will come back into our hearts and remind us, surrender your will that I know not what Allah has planned for me. God forbid that my, my prayer takes me off of that because we work by analogy. You're walking and Allah is about to give you a bag of gold right at that door, an opening because gold can be from the heavens, uh, uh, any type of spiritual opening. And you're peacefully on that direction and as soon as you make your own prayers, your own prayers you just now took a right turn and you missed what Allah was going to open for you. Imagine because we're, we're on a path in which we can't see where it's going, we don't know at which step Allah is showering us with these blessings and had you just passed this street we would have blessed you with everything. But again you intervened and made a right. Doesn't mean you missed it forever but ooh you go down. And then you're about to get something again and what happens? You make another right. And you do that after a series of times and what happens in life? With all these right turns you're making you're just going in circles. You never actually went to where Allah wanted you to go. So part of this sirat al-mustaqeem involves you not going right or left. So at this level of taslim on the path of the nukht because everyone's hearing all these things they have to do, not do, what role playing do I do? When I'm going to be here I'm going to be like a nukht then I should at least start to pray like a nukht, like a dot, like a zero that I surrender my will to you Ya Rabbi this is the greatest gift that I can give. The greatest gift that you gave me is this free will and I ask Ya Rabbi that you take the free will back to the level that I can and what is it that is your will for me, my life and my family? Send for me in my heart my coordinates and grant me into the oceans of taslim and submission. And the only way that they can have the sabr Sabr al-Jameel, this beautific characteristic of sabr is by the salawat of Nabi Mustafa Because the name of Mustafa is the door to sabr. That for the door to open, for the sifat al-sabr has to have the key of Nabi Mustafa coming next month, zilzala. So means that 
this whole package and teaching that we have to make our durood, we do our awrad, we do all of our connection, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem Ya Habibul Azim that dress me, dress me, dress me so that I have the patience and sabr. Sabr al-Jameel Ya Rabbi grant me this beautific characteristic of patience. Because when you keep praying that it's not my will and what is it that you want? I'm not trying my best to intervene, not get angry, not be disturbed, not be… because everyone to their degree of what they can pray. And be taslim, say, Ya Rabbi you always have the best in plans and the best for what you want from me and inshaAllah I surrender my will. And Allah describes those whom they turn their affairs over to Allah and He is the best of those to manage. Because they came to the realization that they can't really manage their own lives. We know because we've seen everybody who came through the door and that's why they're inspired to come through the door of guidance, through the internet, through emails, through in person is they took a path in which not to manage their life, to seek out guidance. And as much as we put our will into our life it seems to be going in different directions and our life is then to submit our will, Ya Rabbi I know not what you want from me, I know not, I know not even what is good for me and that I'm surrendering my will to your will Ya Rabbi and what is it that you want. If you don't do that you start to push everything because you want something and then you start to push it and push it and push it and problems open, difficulties open. And so, how did I get this? How did this happen? So, because you pushed your will. You took something that was not supposed to be taken, you asked for something that was not supposed to be given. You, you ask for some sort of a condition that was not understood and that becomes the hardships of mankind because they have a generous Lord, Allah giving to all, Rabbul Mu'mineen and Rabbul Kafireen. And they are the worst of their own enemies are themselves. So from Khuluqul Azeem and the beatific perfected character Prophet inspires within us, try your best in life to surrender your will. Doesn't mean don't pray for money, don't pray for this, just say, Ya Rabbi what is it that you want from me? Ufawudu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bil ibad, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, the one whom gives is our knocked on the door because Prophet described, say everything three times because it's the adab of knocking, knock three times. <laughs> huh? Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al Asbab, Ya Mufatiha Abwa, Ya Muqalib al Qulubi wal Absar, Ya Dalil al Mutahirin, Ya Ghiyath al Mutafiqeen, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Dujalali wal Ikram. Ufawud Amri, In Allah, In Allahu Basirun bil Ibad. It's sufficient. You knocked on the door from the oceans of generosity. And that you verily at the end said, Ya Rabbi I know you see my condition. If you can't eat do you think Allah doesn't know that? He knows. You can't sleep, Allah doesn't know that? He knows. You want something, He didn't give it, Allah knows. But it requires faith that I know you, you see that my, my situation's in difficulty Ya Rabbi. Only you can relieve me of this difficulty. And it becomes the, the sweetness of their salah. Don't seek it out through your own means and calling this and calling this person, get this person on the phone, shake them down for this, get like this. But cry on your carpet to Allah It's that situation that Allah wants you to come near. You're about to be invaded and you want to call the UN, help me. It's those very people who are trying to raid you, 
the UN. <laughs> what are you calling? Molnani Sheikh would say, what are you calling these people for, for help? Pious leaders would go on their carpet and pray and cry, what am I to do with myself and my community as the enemies at my gate? That Allah send the support, send the difficulty means in every aspect from leaders to people their affair has to be given to Allah because this is the beatific relationship Allah wants. Allah wants His kings in sujood to Him asking, not asking foreign people give me money and loans. And then with those loans they tied up all your assets and now you're slave to them. They took all your minerals that you knew and you didn't know you had. Is this what Allah wanted for you? No, but had you been a pious king, a pious ruler you would have cried unto Allah and He loves the dialogue and say, I send you support from where you can't imagine that in Turkey the maqam of Erdogan, the most popular show on earth exposed what? Eight billion dollars of gold under his maqam. What came first? That they were inspired to produce the story of the, the Khalifas and how this amount of Prophet was given to them because that's the Ottoman Empire. They made the show, Allah was happy and by the way there's some gold under this wali. <laughs> so don't turn to those IMF crooks that they want your money and they want to enslave your population. You have Allah behind you, Allah above you, around you, not behind you but Allah supporting you. So we see from the highest to lowest and lowest who can take us out of difficulty or grant what we want except by the salah, except by the munajat and dua to Allah Ya Rabbi please. And then the crying and asking in sincerity doesn't mean it's going to be answered but He loves the beatific dialogue. And by means of this we draw very close and we have intimate conversations with Allah throughout the day those whom are trained like that. They seek a time alone and they find themselves talking to their Lord. And what he was reciting in the, in the song of Imam Ali, besides you I have never worshipped anyone that is reconfirming to Allah All of that munajat is, is like a claim of who this character is. That is the lion of God, the one whom never worshipped anything but God. And all these realities that you've given to me, I place my face at your feet, at your throne, at your Divinely Presence. Allah has no feet, the Divinely Presence and Ya Rabbi I have no one to turn to but your Majesty. And they drew close and they're continuously talking all day long to Allah because they built an intimate relationship. Had they not done that and there was like a friend to call that would be horrific. Which now today is all the, all the kids that say, who did you call to get advice from? I call my friend, so who the hell is that friend? Some other crook who doesn't know anything? So then they get the, the consensus of crazy people advising each other. So no Allah wanted you to go into your carpet Get the guidance of awliya on, on how to do wash and how to, to think when you're praying and go on your sujood, on your sajada, mm. and now have an intimate relationship with Allah in which He's closer to you than your jugular vein. And for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi means all of these tools are to bring us into the nearness and what we say the qurb. The nearness and dearness because why this is the path of a nukht. The more you became nothing and submitted the closer you are to the one, don't forget it because they become a big guna. That you drew near but you're asking other people, physical people, somebody going to help you with finances? So, ah oh, yeah I went to this loan broker, I went here, I went there. No, nobody can help you unless Allah signed the check first. Nobody's going to heal you, no doctor, no lawyer, no no one. 
until Allah has given the permission. Then you draw near unto your Lord until you feel within your heart, inshaAllah it's opening coming, don't worry. This is all again in the binary and the reality of a nuqt and the reality of this path to be nothing. People hear it say, oh this is interesting but tomorrow they forget it. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.